In front of you is the financing sheet, which is an important piece of the model we are building. Our task is to build a solid logic that works properly when Tesla's business goes well and is profitable, but also in case the company struggles and requires additional funds from the outside. Many people expect that Tesla will need external financing and will have to raise equity or debt capital one or multiple times in the upcoming years. This is why we'll have to make the following assumptions and incorporate them in our model. Assumption number one. If Tesla has a negative, unlevered free cash flow in a given year, then the company would raise financing in the first day of the following year. Assumption number two. Tesla will use 50% debt and 50% equity financing to cover its negative cash flows. Assumption number three. The company's cost of debt would remain constant throughout the forecast period. It will be equal to 7.5%, which was the yield of Tesla's bonds as of the 19th of September, 2018. Okay, now that we have laid out the ground rules, it should be easy to estimate Tesla's long-term debt as well as interest expenses. First off, let me link to the unlevered free cash flow calculated in the cash flow sheet and the one we have here. We can easily see that, in the current scenario, there is only one negative cash flow to be covered, the one in 2019. Nevertheless, we have to construct our model in a way that would allow for flexibility if scenarios are changed. For example, in the worst case scenarios, we will probably have a few additional years producing negative cash flows. In that scenario, we would prefer for the model to adjust accordingly without our intervention. To be able to do that, I'll use an if function. The logical test we will perform is, do we have a negative unlevered free cash flow in a given period? I'll fix the row reference to facilitate copying the function. Then, if the logical test is true, or in other words, if we are in a period when unlevered free cash flow has been negative, we'll cover the loss with 50% debt. I'll multiply the negative cash flow by 50% debt, and we'll fix the row reference of unlevered free cash flow, because I'm going to use this function downwards too. Okay, I shouldn't forget to fix the column reference of 50% debt, as when we paste the function to the right, it will change places. Please pay attention that I am not fixing the row cell reference of 50% debt, as it will nicely adjust to 50% equity when we paste downwards. All right, this is a formula that can be easily pasted for the entire table. Perfect! Next thing on our to-do list, find out the outstanding debt at each year end and then use that figure to calculate interest expenses. Let's start with the outstanding debt as of the 31st of December, 2018. The outstanding debt at the end of 2018 will be given by the outstanding debt at the end of 2017 plus the newly raised debt during 2018 which is equal to zero. Great. For 2019, we have a similar picture. The debt at the end of 2018 plus the debt raised during 2019. I can easily copy and paste this function for the entire forecast period. And then, by multiplying interest rate and outstanding debt in a given year, we'll obtain the interest expenses for the respective period. By the way, let's also calculate the interest expenses for the second half of 2018, as the difference between full year 2018 and the amount of interest expenses registered for the first six months of the year. Okay, that's perfect. This is how we completed our financing schedule. In our next lesson, we'll be able to open up the P&L sheet and arrive at net income. Thanks for watching.